ladies who embroidered a block will give you a brief autobiography in the history of the building which they embroidered. Give us the history of this building. I embroidered the block of the school gymnasium. About 1935, it was decided that the school needed a larger gymnasium so that the basketball court area would be in fair competition with other schools with larger gym floors. A bond issue was passed and the labor was works progress administration labor, most of all it's local. Lumber was used from the old West Side School, the old Buffalo Restaurant, and other vacant buildings on Main Street. The new gym was built just east of the schoolhouse and joined by an enclosed entry. It was gray stucco, trimmed in white. The ground level, north half of the building, contained a big community hall with windows along the north side overlooking the park. Beyond the east end of this hall was the school home ec room with the windows facing the east and the north. Suppers and banquets were held in this community hall as were public meetings and even some adult education classes were held here, such as a class in mattress making. Because the mattress factories were involved in war work, it was next to impossible to buy new mattresses during wartime. You could buy the ticking in cotton, padding for the nominal cost, and a supervisor taught you to make your own. A sharp right turn just inside the entry to the community hall took you to two flights of stairs down to the gym level. At the foot of the stairs, a sharp left turn took you to the public restrooms, and further down, a hall led to the girls' locker room. The locker space was under the community hall. The gym floor was had bleachers all along the south side reached by the main south entry. The bleachers were of concrete tiered into the side of the south wall and had wooden seats. An alcove along the center of the north wall between the stairway and the door to the boys' locker space on the east end held the scorer's bench, as well as ball games. Other activities took place here, such as the Christmas pageants, donkey ball games, and always the prom. The backboards would be fouled up, and according to the class theme, the wire guards over the lights in the high ceilings were covered with colored paper and <laughs> left plain. Wires were strung across the gym, and from these crepe paper streamers were hung all around the walls and woven across the wire to form a sky above about 10 feet high. Sometimes gold or silver stars were fastened on, and sometimes the lights shining through made it look like a star-filled sky. Chairs were placed all around the floor edge for the dancers. A combo was hired. The girls and women wore formals or after five dresses, and most had corsages and the men wore suits. Most of the community turned out, the non-dancers or, the, or those who no longer cared to dance filled the lower feature seats. The gym floor was always pleasantly crowded a beautiful sight. Oh, sweet dreams of you. As soon as school bells ceased to ring, Mr. Burns would refurnish the gym floor till you could see your face in it. It was ready for another big Raider season. This gym was the home of the first Raider team to go to state in 1953. This gym was dozed in and lies buried underneath the new one and the great rooms. Possibly some of the varied strength and courage of the former Raiders filtered up through the new floor to help our Raiders when they took state in 1988.